Okay, shall we start? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, colleagues and students, it's uh, an honor and a privilege to welcome all of you uh, to the Bocconi Boroli, Boroli Lecture of uh, 2014. This is actually the third edition of this important event hosted by other, our university. A special thank to uh, the Fondazione Achille Giulia Boroli, which is actually supporting annually this important event, which is actually open to the entire uh, community in Milan. A special welcome to our uh, outstanding guest, Professor Alan Kruger, Ben Dine, Professor of Economics and Public Affairs at Princeton University, who accepted our invitation to give uh, the lecture this year. I am uh, also particularly grateful to my colleagues, uh, Tito Boeri and Paola Profeta, who actually uh, contributed to the organization of this uh, conference. Finally, I'd also like to thank uh, the representation of the European Commission in Milan for their institutional support. It's a, a great pleasure for me to open this lecture uh, for a number of reasons. First of all, uh, this is uh, an opportunity for us to uh, commemorate Ferdinando Bocconi, who's uh, the very founder of uh, our institution, our university. And starting from uh, 2012, we also honor uh, Mr. Achille Boroli, an important Italian entrepreneur, a forward-looking man who believed in the role of education and placed uh, entrepreneurship and uh, uh, social progress uh, at the center uh, of his life achievements. It is therefore an honor for our university to dedicate uh, this event to two men who shared the same principles based on the value of culture, the importance of education and knowledge, and so were also eager to transmit uh, these values to future generations. The other reason is uh, related to the topic that will be discussed today, as you know, is a particularly relevant topic, especially for our country, the one of the long-term unemployment that uh, uh, some countries, as I said, especially our country, have been facing since uh, the start of the economic crisis. This phenomenon is uh, affecting uh, quite significantly our lives, our economy, and is, of course, particularly relevant for young generations. And uh, because of that, has serious implications on uh, the future economic growth and development as well. There are clearly both uh, demand and uh, supply factors at play. And uh, I am confident that uh, our speakers will uh, help us better understand this uh, complex phenomenon and uh, possibly highlight uh, potential uh, policy measures that could help in addressing effectively this uh, major problem. Professor Kruger, as you know, uh, he will be introduced by my colleague Tito Boeri. He has not only strong uh, scientific background, but also accumulated significant experience as a policymaker, uh, for example, in his role as chairman of the US Council for, Economic Advis for the Economic Advisors under President Obama. Once again, let me thank the uh, members of the Boroli family and the Fondazione Boroli, in particular, Marcella Boroli, Giuseppe Alemani, and Silvia Caldario, who made uh, this event possible. And I very much hope you will all enjoy this event. Thank you. Super. Thank you, Andrea. Let me say that uh, we were very pleased when uh, Alan Krueger accepted our invitation to deliver the third uh, Bocconi Boroli lecture, because uh, Alan Krueger has an outstanding record. He is a Ben Dine Professor of Economics at Princeton University. Uh, he is member of the American Academy of Art and Science, fellow of the American Academy of Political and Social Science, and has been fellow of the Econometric Society, of the Society of Labor Economists, member of the Executive Committee of the American Economic Association. 
he received a large number of important recognitions for his work. In particular, he was awarded the Kershaw Prize by the Association for Public Policy and Management, uh, the Malanombis Memorial Medal by the Indian Econometric Society, and in 2006, he won, together with David Card, the ICA uh, 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 Prize uh, uh, for uh, Labor Economics. Uh, this is a very important uh, uh, recognition, and uh, uh, given that uh, people tend sometimes to consider as a, a kind of Nobel Prize for labor economists, and indeed, if you judge uh, from the experience of those who received a prize before uh, Alan, uh, Chris Pissarides and Dale Mortensen, uh, it may indeed be uh, uh, something which is associated to uh, this very important uh, recognition. In Bocconi, we have uh, a very well-developed program of exchange uh, with other universities. And it happens that we do receive uh, requests for conversion of exams done in other universities. So, um, you know, in these years it happened to me several times to receive proposal of syllabus of courses being taught in other universities. And I have a personal collection of these courses. And I have to say that it never happened to me to go through the reading list of these courses and not to meet at least once the name of uh, Alan Kruger. Uh, the reason is that Alan has been contributing to the literature on labor economics from several standpoints. There is not a single labor market institution that has not been somewhat investigated by his work, from unions to unemployment insurance, uh, from education uh, to collective uh, bargaining, and uh, uh, finally to minimum wages, in particular uh, a paper done by uh, Alan Kruger to waver with uh, David Card on the effect of a minimum wage uh, hike in the New Jersey has been one of the most widely quoted uh, uh, articles on the issue. It has uh, more than 2,000 uh, citation on Google Scholar, and uh, you know it has been opening a very large debate. You know this finding has been challenged and successfully, I have to say, uh, by a large number of uh, researchers. Uh, he also had been applying the, uh, uh, you know, the tools of a labor economist to other subjects. In particular, he wrote a very important book on uh, using an occupational choice model to understand what makes a terrorist. Uh, what uh, Alan does is always very relevant uh, from the standpoint of policy. Uh, he's one of the very few outstanding top I would say economist. Indeed, he is listed as being, uh, by the REPEC ranking, as being uh, one of the 50 uh, most uh, important economists in the world. So he's one of the very few top economists who has no uh, uh, resistance uh, in uh, getting, in a way, the hands dirty, not only with the data, but also with a lot of institutional details, so that he can provide uh, policy advice in a rigorous fashion and in a systematic way. Indeed, uh, he, uh, as already Andrea was uh, reminding before, he has been the chairman of the President Obama uh, Council of Economic Advisors and uh, a member of his cabinet. And uh, previously, he had served the Obama administration uh, as Assistant Secretary for Economic Policy and as Chief Economist uh, at the US Department of the Treasury. He has also been advisor to the Clinton administration. In this uh, multi-annual experience, he contributed to the design of very important programs in the US, ranging from public housing uh, to wage subsidies to, and also to the health reform. He has been called back to the administration after going back to the academia uh, to serve the public administration at a very difficult time. We were just at the beginning of the Great Recession, a time in which uh, um, U.S. unemployment was rising very fast. We were experiencing job losses of the order of one million uh, per quarter. And I have to say that his advice has, seen, has been very important in making sure that uh, unemployment in the U.S. has been relatively short-lived, at least if you judge it from the standpoint of European uh, performance in this respect. Still, 
unemployment, the rise of unemployment during the Great Recession in the US has left a heavy legacy. And this heavy legacy is represented by long-term unemployment. What they mean in the US by long-term unemployment is different than what we mean in long-term unemployment in Europe. Indeed, when we started interacting on this lecture, uh, we realized soon that I was meaning as long-term unemployment people have been unemployed for at least 12 months, while in the US, the definition of long-term unemployment is referred to people being unemployed for at least six months. So it's clearly another order of magnitude in terms of the uh, incidence and of the length of, the, of this condition. Um, but uh, clearly, uh, being a new phenomenon for the US, it has been very uh, heavily and importantly investigated. And uh, clearly, uh, you know, the analysis that uh, today we will uh, go through uh, will tell us a lot of things about what really the duration of unemployment means. I think in Italy and in Europe, we often do discuss about unemployment by considering only the level of unemployment, whether the unemployment rate is 10, 15, or, but we never look very carefully at the flows. And this is important, it's important in its own right, because it makes a lot of difference to have, say, an unemployment rate of 10%, in which there are many people losing a job, but also many people finding a job relatively rapidly, and having the same level of unemployment, 10%, but with a, a very few people losing a job and having a very stagnant unemployment pool so that people stay there for a very long time. Tonight, uh, Alan will talk about uh, the nature and consequences of having long-term unemployment and uh, the policy that can successfully counteract it. Uh, Alan is excellent in uh, simplifying difficult concepts and uh, indeed he has been using this uh, uh, ability in writing for the White House, uh, White House blog as well as for a column on the New York Times. Um, he can convey very difficult messages in a very simple fashion. He's also used to convey rapidly messages. I have to say that in the briefing to President Obama, he told me that he was allowed to use at most four slides. I think that tonight we will be a bit more generous with him. We will allow him to use more than four slides and also to have a bit more of time. And also, rather than asking the question immediately, as President Obama was used to do, we will keep the question for the debate after this presentation. So, Alan, the floor is yours.